Hey guys, welcome back to Cypress Steel Forge. Uh, <laughs> it's been quite the crazy week of doing things backwards, so why not continue, right? So, uh, I filled the uh, intro for several different things all at one time, and the intros all got missing, so I'm kind of piecing stuff back together. So today's intro, it, or well, I guess this evening's intro, is about a fighting sickle the uh, making for the uh, the local shop and so once again it's already done but this one's actually going to be in a matched set so we still got the other one to do but uh, what i'm going to be showing y'all and we're, we're, we're going to be showcasing this one is the making of the handle of course you know they, they were used for fighting they they get into you know if you wanted to fight people with armor in the 14th century, hey, if all you got is, you know, farming implements, that's what you go to war with, and uh, you do the best you can. But uh, in, in this particular case, uh, I, I forged it out, and then we went with a stacked handle, and so that's what we're going to show to, uh, showcase doing. We, we'd already glued it up. Unfortunately, all the, the footage of that got gone, too. I had a young man helping me out. He's going to be finishing up the, the second one, which is why it's not done yet, because he, he wants to get it done, and I, I, can, I can appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, so the, the handles are uh, red oak with leather, uh, crepe myrtle, and then white oak, and this white oak really, really just decided to show up with a lot of personality in this, so uh, I was really thrilled with it. We used the pit parts that were right up against the bark and man did that really come out nice you're gonna see it start shaping from the very beginning of it when it's just glued together with some blocks of wood and it gets polished out all the way to a thousand grit and then we uh, use linseed oil to protect the wood and then uh, beeswax so uh, now uh, first thing I'm using my smaller grinder right now I had been using the the one by 48 the larger one I'm just I'm running out of 80 grit for it and I uh, so I got to order some more and I've got a couple hundred 80 grit for the little one so that's what we're gonna use today it's fine all we gotta do right now is we're just gonna be working it uh, shaping it the when we're working with the wood it really does go through these uh, these uh, belts uh, it just it clogs up the belts. It, it they just chew them up more than the metal does. I, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but I'm sure there's a reason. Anyhow, so we're gonna get started on that, and uh, here we go. As you can see, we're just, uh, you know, steadily turning it like that, get that nice round shape. You can see, once that's ground down, it's, it gives it that really nice uh, stripe there. And, uh, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep working all the way down and giving it that, that nice rounded, you know, handle shape. Uh, some of y'all may wonder, uh, wouldn't it be easier if I put it on a lathe and turned it uh, beforehand? And the answer is, yeah, probably. <laughs> if I had uh, had a lathe or any skill with a lathe, yeah, uh, building the handle ahead of time and then just setting the, uh, the blade into it would probably be super simple. Um, yeah, so if anybody's out there that uh, owns a lathe and has a ton of patience... I'm willing to learn. <laughs> Not great at learning, but I'm willing. So, yeah, so uh, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to keep hand turning it, and we'll just work our way down and uh, until it's nice and comfortable. I, I, you know, did this top part because uh, once we polish it, that's, that's really just going to, it's going to stand out. It's going to pop, and, you know, gets a, uh, makes it look nice. So, let's keep going.
Alright, so that's going to do the uh, the rough grind for us. So, we've run into a few interesting things, but I don't necessarily think they're bad. I think they're going to give it character. For one, we've got a... Uh, I, I would call it a surface crack because it doesn't go anywhere. But there's, you know, it, it's it's not splitting the wood. It's just a uh, an interesting crack. And secondly, uh, some of the bark ran deeper and so what I think I'm gonna do is take this over to the uh, the wire wheel here and we'll smack off whatever comes off and we'll leave the rest and then uh, as we polish it and whatnot uh, we'll probably go over it with a polyurethane to help keep everything intact and uh, you know do our staining or uh... yeah I'm probably gonna stain I haven't made up my I may bring that top down just a little bit. You see, I uh, I just flattened this part just a touch, and that's just for indexing it. Because while it looks rough, and that's kind of the intention, I, I like rustic looking things, you know. Um, yeah, it still needs to fit nicely in the hand. It still needs to feel comfortable. And uh, yeah, aside from, you know, a ninja stuff, uh, you know, you could, you could feel comfortable chopping up you know, harvesting rice or grain or whatever. Dude, this feels pretty good in the hand. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to polish it up some more. But, uh, yeah, that, that's a pretty good feel. Well, we've got it polished all the way through the thousand, and I can tell you, I made a, a real bad mistake in judgment. I really, really just underestimated the amount of character that this white oak was going to bring all by itself to this thing. And I'll be honest, I don't want to stain it. So I'm just going to linseed oil it and beeswax it. I, I think it, it's got an amazing amount of character all on its own, and I don't want to mess that up. I, I think this is going to be really, really beautiful, and we just need to let the natural beauty of that wood just shine. And, oh my, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that is gorgeous. Look at that. Where the bark was and all, it just looks so beautiful. Now, so let that be a lesson to all of us, including myself. Never underestimate your wood. Uh, you know, you, you think you got something really simple. I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's, it's just white oak. I've, I've dealt with white oak a bunch. Or like this crepe myrtle. The, the, you don't usually see this brown in there. I, I usually have to, to char it to get any, any character out of it. But today, man, the crepe myrtle's just bringing it. it it's really popping. The uh, the red oak on top, it, it's... Heck, it almost looks like the white oak. It's just so... Wow. It, it's almost like a tree. It, it really just reminds me of, like, its own natural roots and stuff so yeah hey living and learning right never never underestimate the wood you got because it really can be its own thing all right well we've uh, applied two coats of uh, linseed oil to them we've sharpened them up they good and hair popping sharp so let's finish this thing up. Like I said, uh, this here, 
it ain't nothing but some beeswax. Uh, just take and mold it down in a pot and then mix it with some standard mineral oil. And you see it just, it softens it up and makes it like a paste that can then be just spread on onto the wood and helps protect the wood and condition it and it's good for the blades from rusting nothing wrong with some beeswax on your blade especially if they're going to be in storage for a little while or uh you know like this one here is going out to a storefront so I don't have any way of knowing how long it's going to sit there. Someone might pick it up the next day. Somebody may not pick it up for months or ever. I mean, that's just reality. I, I don't know. So what I, what I don't want is it sitting in the, in the case rusting because that would look terrible. So a little bit of beeswax will fix that. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, we've got a lot more in the works. This is going to be uh, one of a match set. So... Got to get the other one done. So, uh, yeah, that's it for this week, guys. I, I truly cannot tell you how much I appreciate all of you. Uh, you know, I've been doing a couple of little things on the side here. Uh, for, for those who saw it, I showed off Spot. I, I, I couldn't be more proud of him. He, he was so awesome yesterday. Just decided to come up. He wanted some pets. That's like the second time he's ever done that. He'll sometimes let me pet him when I give him treats, but to just come up and, you know, flop and roll around and want his belly rub, that was really special. Anyways, guys, uh, thank you all so much for everything. I, I genuinely appreciate everyone that watches, everyone that orders. So, uh, y'all take care.